Hello everyone, this is Ambi. Hope everyone is doing fine. Today we will talk about Python data types and let us talk about sets, shall we? So, yeah, let me go ahead and get it here. Python data types, yeah, sets 3.7. Let me change it to markdown. Shift enter. Okay, so set is an unordered collection with no duplicate elements. So set is an unordered collection without any duplicates. Yeah. Code markdown shift enter. Now let me go ahead and create a JLT. Uh, Justice League Tapo. So, Batman, Superman, Aquaman, Flash, Cyborg, Wonder Woman. Justice League tuple. So if I say type JLT, it's a tuple. Let me say JLL. That is list JLT Justice League tuple. Yeah, JLL. Yep, that's a list. Now, how do we make a set JLS? is set jll yeah and then I'll let me print same thing i say jls is set tuple yeah i'm sorry uh, jlt is a tuple okay and i will print jls yep so that is how we convert a list or a tuple into a set then how do you access an element? Let's say C Y, right? Cyborg. Uh, I'm gonna say C Y B O R G. I am going to create a small set with just one element here. Yeah, I will say C Y, and let's say type C Y is what? It's a set. Yeah. Then I'm going to do JLS minus CY. What happened? This is how you, uh, this is, uh, I mean, you got the result, right? Uh, in JLS, we have one, two, three, four, five, six elements. In CY, we have one element. We subtracted a bigger one, a bigger set with a smaller set. But if you print JLS, the original remains unaltered, yeah? And then here, you can convert a string. Can you? No. Here, this is how you do it, yep. Yeah, set Python quickly uh, convert a string. Quickly convert a string to a set. We saw how to convert a tuple to a set, a, a list to a set, a string to a set. Then let me go ahead and uh, define this here. Mm. What if I set? Python minus set Cyton. Yeah. And see what happened here, P. So if somebody asks you, okay, so I have two strings, two names, I want to find unique letters in them. 
string a string b this is how you do that yeah let's say let's go ahead and uh, define two sets python c is set of cython yeah p minus c is let us in p but not in c this is what we got it what if we say c minus p is let us in c but not in p c got it so it um as you know uh 2 minus 4 is 2, 4 minus 2 uh, is 2. I mean, there's a difference between minus and plus. The same way here, right? Um, you are subtracting something from someone. So whoever is that uh, someone, the bigger element, will take uh, precedent. Letters in C, but not in P. Then we do this. C is let us in P R C C H N O P T Y. So all the letters which are there in P and C. P and C is let us in P and C. Let us which are common to both of them. Then I'll say P let us in P R C so let us in P R C but not in uh, both something which are unique to both of them uh, when you you do this operation on two sets whatever that is unique to both the sets you will get that result how do you calculate the length of a set p that is l e n g t h offset yeah, and then we have p in p check if string p is uh, is in set p true uh, basically we are doing a membership operation here if i see c in p not in p right check if C is not in set P. True. C is not in P, it's in uh, C. String C is in set P. True. Uh, C, yep, true. How do I join two sets then? P plus C. Now that won't work. Uh, this is how you add an element to a set. Okay, if I print P now, now I have K added to the set. I can also add integers, not just strings. P. There we go. Set dot add X. adds element x to a given set mm, okay let me do a markdown on this let's run jls again that's our set t a let's define a tuple one nine maybe j l s dot add t 
let's print JLS here. As you can see, you can go ahead and add a top. You can. What about a list? I will say just ALL and two comma eight. And then I will do JLS dot add LL. You can't. So you can't add a list to a set. Then JLF dot add nine. Uh, well, let's go ahead and define a JLF first. What is JLF? Frozen set JLS. Yeah. JLS F stands for frozen. JLF is this. As you can see, frozen set here. JLF dot add 99. So you can't. Frozen set object has no attribute add because frozen set is immutable. Set is mutable frozen set is immutable you can say type jlf it says frozen set again jls.pop it pops out the pops out the item jls it's not always the last item as you saw in list set dot pop behaves differently than list dot pop list dot pop pops out the last element of a list and like set dot pop set dot uh, set is an unordered collection so there's no first and last. Hmm, I ran twice, I guess. Okay, JLS. Anyway, so you can also remove an item, JLS start remove then you can say what item you want to remove jls that item got removed you can copy that to jls dot jls dot copy set dot copy copy to set But what if you want to store that here and then I want to print that as well. Yep. There you go. JLC is a copy of that. Now, uh, what if I do ID JLC and ID JLS? They are different. What if I want to do jlc dot clear yeah. set dot clear clears our set let me see jlc as you can see the set is empty now it's an empty set let's say jl uh, t as we saw it this is a jlt right so what we're going to do here is we're going to create jls equals set of jlt again because we need a bigger set to work on that's why Then I had P here, I had C here. 
I can also do do this p dot difference c. So what does it do is let me do a markdown here. So please be aware um, set a minus set b set b minus set a uh, set a dot uh, difference of set b uh, set b dot difference of set a now you uh, pay a close attention to that that you will get confused most of the time i, I am confused too so whenever i have to choose between them i just look up this and now get on with it if you're doing these things regularly uh, then you'll be fine okay so set one dot difference set two returns a set of values set one minus set two there you go meaning all values which are in set two are removed from set one and uh, Mm, remaining remaining values of set one are returned yeah are let me do this yep so returned a set of values which are unique to set one against set two returns the result of set one minus set two. So whichever, the same way if you do P minus C here, yep, both are the same, right? So if I do P minus C is, let's see whether it throws an error or something, no. So both are same, I mean, instead of doing this, you can, instead of doing this, you can just do this. Again, the same thing, C, that is, instead of doing this, what you can do here is put P, put C, enter, C minus P, enter, the values are same. Let's define two more sets here. A equals one, two, three, four, five. B is three, four, five, six, seven. A dot difference B. One, two. But A, the original remains the same. B, the original remains the same, right? Uh, what if we Okay, the original here remains the same. The original set B is unchanged. What if we want it to be changed? Well, that is what we are going to uh, um, have a look at later. Let me see here. So, but in real world mathematics, if you change something, if you subtract A, um, or let's say b from a a changes right so that is why we have this difference underscore update b what it means is this modifies set a with the result that is a is this now what about B? Well, B remains the same thing. Let us do the opposite now. I'm going to say Control C, Control V here because I'm going to need them now. Let's see. Yeah, what did we do here? Control A, Control C, Control V. I will change this A to B. I will change this to A. This modifies B right i'm going to say b here and we have b the original b got altered and updated what if i say a dot remove what about a 
8 remain the same, 8 out remove, 9, we, so when we try to remove an item which is not there in set, it will throw an error, okay. So let's define 3 now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, 3 sets. So that is why if you don't want to get get an error like this, what you do here is a dot mm, discard nine, yeah. And I'm gonna print a. So what happened here? Nine is not there in set a, so we did not remove. So what discard means is remove if it exists ignore if it doesn't then we have a few more a dot intersection b if you know what is a when diagram and mathematics or you can google it and find out you will understand this intersection better the elements which are common between two sets a and b Three, four, five. Then what a uh, B intersection A, right? So this is what I have. Same as above. Then A dot intersection B comma C. Elements which are common between a b c yep that is four or five as you can see one two three four five four five is here four five is here four five is here so set one intersection other sets returns a set of common elements 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 between set one and other sets Okay, as we saw earlier, we saw difference and difference update. The same way we can do uh, that here. I'm gonna copy paste it one more time so that it's visible for us. A dot intersection underscore update B. What does it mean? Do an intersection of A and B update a with the result that's what it means a b remains the same thing and you know, it has not changed what if we do a dot intersection okay yeah let me take all this unchanged let me rewrite now if i do okay let me do one more Okay, B dot intersection underscore update C, All right? And B, yeah. And you can also do this, A dot intersection underscore update B comma C. Hey, what happened? So do an intersection of A, B, C, and update the result to a a dot intersection underscore update star other sets updates the set a with the intersecting common elements of a, B, A, and other sets. 
So what I'm doing here now, this uh, making notes here, it's called Markdown language if you don't know it already. Let's now go ahead and define four sets. We're gonna need a lot more here. So a dot disjoint. Mm. Okay, disjoint, let's do B, yeah. Um, B, so what does it do? Check if set A and set B have common elements. Oh, I'm sorry, not this one, is disjoint, yeah. False. Do they have common items? One, two, three, four, five. B is three, four, five, six, seven. That's interesting. Yep. Okay. Uh, then let me do this. Okay, here is disjoint C. False. Then B is disjoint D. So B is a disjoint of D. B and D, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, four, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. As you can see, B is not a joint of D. That means there's no there are no common items, that's why it's true. Check if set A and B have common elements. If they have, then it returns false. That I, that I actually should say set A and set B don't have common elements. If they have common elements, then it will say, that's why it says is disjoint. It doesn't say is joint. Hmm. Coming to that is joint point, we think we uh, will cover this right after this, yeah? So let me do mark down here. Set one is disjoint set two, check if set one has common elements with set two. One does not have common elements with two, yep. So let's define more sets, we need more. So a dot is sub set b, yeah, is set a subset of b that's what it means in english a dot is subset e false then let me do e so you can copy this, control A, control C, control V, E is subset A. Mm -hmm. All right, so true, what does it mean? So E is four, five, A is one, two, three, four, five. So what I'm asking is, is set E subset of A? As you can clearly see, all the elements of E are in A. That means it is a subset of A. Let's do one more. E dot is subset um, B is set E subset of B. True, E is four, five, B is three, four, five, six, seven, three, four, uh, four, five are here, four, five are here. So E is, all the elements of E are in B. So it makes sense. Set one dot is subset of set two. If all members of set one are in set one, uh, are in set two, then set one is a subset of set two. Makes sense. Mm 
Mm, okay, there is, I think, one more I have to do. Um, B dot is superset E is B a super set of set A true. So set one dot is a superset of set two. So set one is a superset of set two if set one has all the elements of set two. So it's the opposite of uh, is subset. Instead of asking um, is B, uh, is E a child of B, we're asking is B a father, a mother, a parent of E. Uh, what we are asking is, uh, here we were asking does all the elements of E are in B, right? But here we are asking are all the elements of uh, uh, are the elements of B contain all the elements of E. Just a vice versa, the other way of saying it. A dot is super set E. Yep, true. Okay, I have put up some analogy here. Oh, that's okay. It is like if John is father of Jill, then Jill is son, daughter of John, right? So A, I have symmetric difference one, two, six, seven. Hmm, what is it? Interesting. B, uh, symmetric underscore difference. C, yeah, and then I have, let me do with A and C, what I get, hmm, I'm getting something, let me do between A and E, okay, I'll explain where it is. So symmetric difference returns a new set with elements which are unique to each set. That's why it's called symmetric difference. Mm, so A and B are, oh, okay, they're very on top here. Let me, mm, okay, let me paste it here. So A, symmetric difference B, elements which are unique to A and B. Um, one, two, three, four, five, it starts, uh, it ends with three, four, five, it starts with three, four, five. So elements which are common, which are unique to A are one, two, Elements which are unique to B are six, seven. So one, two, six, seven. The same way B and C, the elements which are not common in both of them are unique to themselves are three, eight. Uh, between A and C, they are one, two, three, six, seven, eight. Between A and E, they are one, two, three. As you can clearly see here. So what's the definition? Here's my understanding of it. All right, so just like difference update, we also can do an update here. A dot symmetric difference underscore update B, yeah. And then you have B dot symmetric underscore difference underscore update C. Hmm, well, first let me print A here. What happened? A became one, two, six, seven. Well, I think I should have posted it here for us to see. Hmm. So A had one, two, three, four, five. Um, B had three, four, five, six, seven. And the items which are unique to A and B were one, two, six, seven. Now I'm adding underscore update here to the built-in function. That means the result of this like, symmetric difference function will be updated to A. So I'm gonna say take this here. And I'm going to add underscore update and, and I'm gonna say B became 38. Yep, the value of B is now 38. 
and then let me do this now this a has been already altered if i do this it won't make a difference so let's uh, take this again overwrite abc values um, we have to do a union now we were doing only subtraction intersection and all difference now a dot union b as combines all the elements of a and b but what about a hmm say so a is still unchanged a plus what about a plus b no you can't as we checked earlier what if i do a dot union c as you can see it's just adding elements of both the set that's what it does you can also do it with multiple elements b d e yep still it will do the same thing let me do mark down here okay so a b is one two three four five six seven a and b as you can see then you can also do it with between when i say a r b that is what it is one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven the union right so what if i want to do with um let's say here i have a b d e right a b d e a dot union right let me see what i get one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve same thing i can eat i can also check if you want to be so sure of it you can ask python whether both are same it says yes they are same let's uh do an ls here 88 99 um type ls it's a tuple no a a dot update ls a yep so as you saw right uh, let me do it again okay ls it printed out here type is tuple a is this I mean, oh so a has been already updated right so let me do this here again yep so i added a tuple to a set and it unpacked them added each elements that's quite clever very nice so set one dot update set list dictionary updates a given set one with the values of set our list our dictionary it directly takes the values no keys So let's define a bigger set here. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. These many sets, right? So A is this. A dot update E is then A 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, then what if I update it with a dot update f a yes so bat soup so when i updated a and e that is a is one two three four five e is four five it printed only uh, elements of one two three four five because four five and a common set is set does not allow duplicates so it removed the duplicates and returned only unique numbers a dot update f f is this bat bruce wayne super uh, no, clark as you can see you have bat here you have soup here that is you have keys okay you don't have values 
it, it just took the keys and added them it unpacked it added the keys and values are gone what if i want to do a dot update g now g is just hey okay a is this yeah then i have any function h what does it mean is check if any of the elements in h are true yep then we have all h are all the elements of h true yes what if i do all the elements of j uh sorry i false because all the elements of i are not true and all the elements of j are not true either they are false so if i do all j i get a boolean false so any checks this yep and all checks that any checks if any of the element in a set are true all checks if all the elements of a set are true it can't be uh, it can't just be boolean values uh, i can also put for example let's say k is this one equals one and i'll say true yeah then i'll do all k true because one is equals one that is a true statement so when i say true doesn't mean it's just a boolean value true it can be a true statement as well let me go ahead and add that to here right k is one one false and i'm gonna say any k true awesome all right now let's go ahead and uh ASCII A. Then I'm going to do, well, they are on very top. Let me go ahead and copy paste them again here. Mm, yep. And now do, let me do, because I want you to be able to see it so you don't have to scroll up and down. ASCII A, one, two, three, four, five. And ASCII C is four five six seven eight so ascii method returns a string containing a printable representation of an object so you can convert that to an ascii if there are non ascii characters it will just make it uh, ascii what is ascii well it spells and sounds a bit funny but you have to uh, you better look it up when you have time if you're playing with strings a lot then you will need it so here uh, i'm gonna copy paste just this because i can't type i don't know how to type these symbols so ascii python so it converted that uh, o and everything to an ascii printable character you can print this then see this ascii the right tick yeah so this is what an ascii does then we have bool let me do zero here why am i covering this inside because i forgot to cover this earlier my so boolean zero and i say bool zero dot zero bool i think false boolean is true or false okay then i say bool uh, an empty list what if i do a bool of nine true 
So what a bool does is bool converts a given value to true or false. Let me put out a table for you here. All right, here we go. Yep, boolean here. You know, it's a boolean and it says false, all of them. So all of the below return false in Python boolean when the, everything else apart from these will return true. Anything else other than this, if you try to convert that in Python, it will return true. So let's go for enumerate here, enumerate, start, zero. Hmm, nothing, then what if I convert that to set, control A, control C, control V here. There you go. Uh, enumerate adds an index, like uh, if you have a table on the left-hand side, uh, at the very beginning you will have a counter which counts uh, helps you to list out an item. That's what it does. You don't have to put out a zero. By default, it will assume it as zero, but you can put something else. Uh, that is the same as this one here. You know, both are same, start equals zero. Um, I just put zero or put nothing and let's see what happens. Same thing happens. And you can also do this. You don't want to start with zero, you want to start with something else, maybe 11, yeah? So there you go. That's your enumerator. Enumerate set, start equals zero, enumerates the elements in a set. I don't have to give start equals zero, I will just say start in a set from start point. Yep, I think that makes sense. Now let's uh, print E here. E is, yep, four, five. That's our set. E is four, five here. Then K is zero, one, four, eight, nine, seven, yeah? Zero, one, four, eight, nine, seven. I redefined K. Now, let me go ahead and uh, define my own function here. Define my fun element return element percentage two equals zero yeah so what does it do this function checks if the element is divisible by two correct enter here and then what i will do is fil as in filter my function k FIL returns something, so to make it meaningful, I will convert that to set 048. So here I define a function which checks if the given element is completely divisible by 2 without any reminder. That is, it's factorial, what's called, you know. Um, I'm sorry, not, not factorial, modulus, right? Here, uh, when you divide an element by two, the reminder must be zero. So that is true for zero, four, and eight. One, nine, seven, no. In this way, uh, when you want to filter out something, you can define your custom function here and an iterable here that will take care of it. Yep. So this is, this will come in very handy. Then I will do one more fill one, f 
filter none k and I will just set file one it returns all of them as it is but without zero without zero zero is gone here so why is zero gone again I mean filter should uh, since I have not put any function here why is zero gone because you see here it returns false so if you don't provide your own function what it does is anything which returns true any uh, element uh, which returns true in this k will be returned since zero is a false statement uh, if you do bool zero if you do this zero it returns false if i do one it returns true if i do four returns two right all these elements will return true so let me put that here oh, i think i better put it here it makes sense yeah so without any filtering function applied it applied to it apply to it it returns all those values which return true then let me take another one my iter is iter a yeah so my iter is i i got something right first let me print out uh what is a this is a okay so my iter i i created something so iter is a built-in function uh, you will know what it is right so here when i say my iter it returns something i don't know what it is if i type it again it returns the same thing so i can't convert it to a list so what should i do i should do next my iter enter one then two three four five again because there are no elements to give out one two three four right one four seventy nine here but a is sorry a is one two three four five it returned all the elements every time i ran it so it returned an error stop iteration right no more element no elements left So it a, a collection creates an iterator and using next, we can output one element at a time from the iterator till all the elements are like gone. But if you return A, the original A is still there. Still there. So max of A, we already know, minimum of A returns the minimum of the smallest element there. The same uh, minimum of set A returns the smallest number, right? So let's say define our own function. I know that we have not covered function yet. We will, but let's um, just go with me on this one. I define square meet. It's just a, a square of whatever number that you give. Yeah. So I'm going to do a new function here, map and square me uh, a. Hmm, it returns something, but what if I do, I want to do set of uh, let me go ahead and you know and uh, give it a value i'm gonna say sqs yeah that's fine and then this sqs i'm going to say set sqs or i mean i could have said the result or let's do list yeah list sqs what did it do? 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. It's A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
it's 1491625 so you can define in, in map you can define a function here you can have an iterator here this function will be applied to all of them and it will result a uh, data type so now what i'll do here is uh, let's say i have one more right i'm going to say sum uh, a 15 so this is a 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 is uh, 15 that is um, a sum of all the elements of set yep so what does the sum do here is a collection and returns a sum of all the elements of a collection uh, whether it can be set list or tuple but since we're talking about set here we I gave you an example of set so let's define something else here a b uh, these are all set a b one two three set bat cat rat so all these are set except this ls which is a list one two three yep so let me do zip here zip a b b c hmm you should add something so let me rather do this result equals control a control c i'm going to enter result set result yep so hmm what happened here a b and b c a b is one two three b c is one bat cap uh, i'm sorry bat cat rat uh, one is mapped to rat two is mapped to bat three is mapped to cat uh, i'm sorry not actually map map is a different function but here zip is uh, it will put them in parallel to each other and um, matches the elements like whoever is in parallel to each other then what did we okay let's do a few more of them right let's uh, do let me say result is a b b c was there right now let's see b c and uh, c d so what what does that do then i'm going to say result set okay so let's see, copy this control a control c control a control v set bat two cat three rat one interesting let's do another one uh, a b c d yeah result is this and then also print this one one two two three three interesting let's do another one here and this one set one one two two three three a b d e okay so let's do another one this directly set zip d e and l s d e is one two three four l s is one two three as you can see here d e has four elements l s has only three so let's do what happens one one three three two two so whoever has the least amount of elements gets to define when it should stop as soon as it hi uh, hits the end um, of the length of any given set you know it will stop there what if i want to do more than one set can i do that let's say should be able to one rat one one two bat two two three cat three three yep that's what we have so what does a zip do zip does this yep shift enter all right so i think that's all i had uh, for now for sets thank you for tuning in you have a great one take care